Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, we're going to be talking about one of the most broken sets in Genshin Impact, the Emblem of Severed Fate set. I'm going to be talking about why this set is so broken and clear out a lot of misconceptions out there and a lot of questions that I've been asked routinely every single time I stream regarding the set and why it's so good. Now, my regular viewers will remember that I made a video talking about the set before it came out about a month ago, but in this video, I'm not only going to be going into a lot more detail, but also mainly covering a lot of things that I didn't mention previously, especially explaining why this set is so good, why it's so resin efficient, and why I truly Really believe it is one of the most broken sets in the game for a ton of characters. Since the previous video, we also know a lot more about Raiden Shogun or Ball, and so we get to talk about this emblem set on Ball and whether or not it'll be good for her. So before we begin, I do want you guys to know that I stream most nights on Twitch, link in the description if you're interested. Be sure to subscribe if you're new because it means a lot, and with that being said, let's get into it. First of all, in case you guys don't know what this set does, I am going to read it out just once for this whole video. Basically, the two-piece set gives you 20% energy recharge, and then the four-piece, as I'm sure you're aware, gives you 25% of your energy recharge as elemental burst damage. You can get a maximum of 75% damage this way to your burst, and this is not only good for characters who want to stack an immense amount of energy recharge, but also good for characters whose damage mainly comes from their burst and even with characters with pretty low energy recharge i'm talking around 130 this set can still be amazing and potentially best in slot four now that is probably information that you already knew however the 2p set of this artifact is very underrated and something i want to go into more detail on basically even in situations where the four piece doesn't give you as much damage as another set like two piece plus oblige with another two piece because the emblem of severed fate gives you 20 percent energy recharge it's usually better to keep this simple, let's use an example like Beto. Before the emblem set came out, she would usually run 2 piece Thundering Fury with 2 piece Noblesse Oblige, and this can be applied to many characters that will run 2 piece Noblesse with another uh, elemental damage bonus 2 piece. Beto is a character who can be ran on as low as 135 energy recharge in a good comp with a good rotation, so this is a pretty low estimate that we're going to work with to show you guys that even at this low energy recharge, the new emblem set is still OP. The reason for that is because the Thundering Fury Noblesse combo gives you 35% burst damage to your Beto, and another 15% damage bonus to your skill as well, which is your sort of other source of electro damage. The emblem set, however, will give you 25% uh, of your energy recharge as burst damage, so it'll increase your burst damage by 25% of your ER. And if you're running a pretty low amount, like 135, that'll give you about 33.75% burst damage. So in this case, the four piece will give you a similar amount of burst damage, like basically the same as 2 Noblesse 2 TF, but then you lose out on that 15% skill damage that you're gaining. So how is this better? Well, as I mentioned, the 2B set of the emblem uh, of Severed Fate set gives you 20% energy recharge. That 20% energy recharge is equivalent to three to four substats, which is absolutely insane. As you probably know, and as I can show you guys uh, pretty quickly, since energy recharge substats range from 4.5 to 6.5, the average being 5.5, this emblem of Severed Fate set will save you somewhere between three and four substats. If we take the average of rolls, it's about 3.6 substats, but basically three to four substats that you're saving. And since you're using the set on characters that need energy recharge, this two piece is a much needed effect right the 20% energy recharge are stats that you're going to be looking for on those characters they're substats that you would otherwise need on your pieces because of that running this two piece not only makes it a lot easier for you to have a uh, good enough energy recharge makes it a lot easier for you to build a character without needing as many er rolls but it can also allow you to reinvest those substats into damage effectively making it the best set. If you were to take the same three to four rolls and invest them into crit damage, for example, this two piece would be the equivalent of 24% crit damage in substats that you could get if you don't need the energy recharge by not having to build energy recharge on your substats if you are optimizing your pieces. And obviously the same can be said for like crit rate, attack percent, or even elemental mastery on certain characters that might need that. So I don't want to talk for too long because I've had to like re-record this part because I ramble on, but basically this 20% ER is great. It can be nice uh, just to make building characters easier and not need as good artifacts to get the ER that you need and it also uh, just gives you more damage by allowing you to reinvest your substats into things like crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, and all that. Also, as a last example, to show you guys how good this two-piece is, you can actually get all the energy recharge you need on specific characters from just the two-piece and a weapon. So for Sing Chu in particular, if you have a sack sword that has a decent level of refinement, the 60% you gain plus the 20% on your emblem already gives you 180 energy recharge to where you really either don't need any substats or only need a bit more because the exact amount you need depends on your weapon and the refinement level of your sack sword, ranging from 180 all the way up to 200 or slightly more. But for 
for me personally, this is enough energy recharge to get my burst back on cooldown, and it's only coming from the set effect and the weapon. As you can see, my artifacts themselves have zero energy recharge, not a single ER substat, to where running this Emblem of Severed Fate set is really good and allows me to have more damage and allow me to just not build energy recharge on my character. Now, in case you guys are confused by this, let me repeat something that I mentioned in my last video very briefly. Basically, even with the new Emblem set, you still want the exact same amount of energy recharge that you previously did on every single character. The reason for that is because while the 4P set is really good and increases your burst damage quite significantly, it doesn't increase it enough to where building more energy recharge than what you need to comfortably get your burst back on cooldown is ever worth it. And while it makes rolling too much energy recharge less painful, it will never be better to go overkill on the energy recharge by going like an energy recharge sans instead of attack percent or by going for insane amounts of energy recharge on your substat instead of something like crit or attack percent. To do a very quick explanation as to why that's true, because I saw a lot of comments in my last video asking about it, basically 25% of your energy recharge that you gain, let's take an energy recharge substat for example, 25% of one energy recharge substat, which as we know, averages out to 5.5. 25% of that 5.5 is 1.375. So a bit under 1.5% damage to your burst that you're gaining. Now think about how little 1.5% burst damage is as a substat when you compare it with something like crit rate, crit damage, which again averages out at around 6.6, .6, or even attack percent, which buffs your whole kit. Now very quickly, I also wanted to show you guys uh, with the Emblem of Severed Fate set, why an energy recharge sans is worse than an attack percent sans if you don't need the insane amount of ER that this gives you. Basically showing you guys that attack percent is still a lot more damage than ER. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to show you guys my Sync Choose Rain Sword damage with an attack sans, and then I'll show you it with an ER sans. Now keep in mind, while the substats might look different, they actually favor the energy recharge sans, since this one gives me a lot of attack and 26% crit damage, whereas my current attack one gives me less crit damage, and elemental mastery, which is useless since we're not proccing reactions, and crit rate, which here doesn't matter since we're only going to look at our crit's damage, so we'll only look at the number when we do crit. Therefore, we're going to be comparing a inferior attack percent sans to a better energy recharge sans, and we'll still deal more damage with the attack percent one. My Sinchu right now, in case you're wondering, does have 124 crit damage and 181 ER, which is plenty for my build. Okay, so to show you guys, basically, as I showed, I am running this attack percent sans right now. And do keep in mind that Sinchu's second constellation decreases the hydro res of opponents, so the damage ideal will increase uh, once the hydro res is decreased. So just keep that in mind. My first hit will do 3068 if I crit. Second one does 3494. So keep that number in mind. 3494 per rain sword. Uh, is what we are getting when we crit. All right, so now I swap my sands from this Bloodstained one to this Energy Recharge one, which again gives me more damage, but will still be worse because Energy Recharge on the sands is worse than Attack Percent. You'll see uh, my crit damage is even higher than before, and I do have an insane amount of Energy Recharge, which will buff my character with the Emblem of Severed Fates four piece. Now, if I do use my burst here, you'll remember the last Rain Sword number was 3494. As you can see, I'm only doing 3258, which is obviously less than 3494, less than it was previously. You'll see that through this very scuffed uh, test, scuffed showcase, but the math obviously defends it, uh, attack percent on the sands is still more important than energy recharge. And having any more energy recharge than what you need to get your burst back on cooldown, I can't stress this enough, once you have enough energy recharge to use your burst, like whenever it's off cooldown, then you don't need any more, and going for attack percent, going for crit rate, going for crit damage will all be much more valuable. All right, so I hope I did a good job at explaining that part, because I've seen a lot of questions about that. Now I want to get into a bit of a newer thing that, uh, again, I see a lot of people forgetting and not really talking about, and that's how resin efficient this domain actually is. Basically, the Emblem of Severed Fate set is viable on many characters and best in slot on a lot of them. That means that when you're building new characters, when you want to improve your account, or when you have a lot of characters to build at the same time, this is a domain where you can grind it for a very long time, and then it's just really good because it betters so many of your characters. For example, let's say you get a ton of flowers, right? Me, personally, I have a lot of good flowers of the set, but very few, like, good circlets and very few of the other pieces, right? Like, I'm stuck with this feather that makes me super sad, uh, but I do have a ton of flowers. With many artifact sets, this could suck, but since so many of my characters need emblem, grinding it for so long will allow me to min-max my characters even more and get really good pieces for everyone that needs it. On top of that, and the biggest reason why it is resin efficient is because the other set, the Reminiscent set, is a pretty good set in general. While this isn't a video about the Reminiscent set, it's very nice because the two-piece is uh, another two-piece glad, which is best in slot on a few characters and very good overall, and the four-piece set is very good on specific characters like a Melt Ganyu. It is viable 
reliable on child, Hu Tao. It can also be good for Yoimiya or characters who don't really rely on their burst to deal damage. So it's just a pretty good set to have. And once again, the 2B set giving you 18% attack is quite universal and also a very good replacement to just any set you don't have on a character as a sort of placeholder if your sub stats are good. Also in this video, I did want to urge you guys to start farming this set right now if you have characters that need it or if you plan on pulling for Ball. Now we know that Ball is coming in patch 2.1. It has been confirmed. You can see the banner. We know that Ball and Sara are going to come together in the next banner on patch 2.1. And while we don't know Ball's official scalings or anything like that yet, we do know that the emblem set will very probably be good on her because of what they mentioned in the trailer. In the official 2.1 trailer, they said that Ball's burst will infuse her and sort of buff her attacks and her attacks during her burst will be counted as burst damage. They very clearly specified that her attacks in her burst will be burst damage, which means that something like the two piece Noblesse Oblige or even the emblem set will buff her burst. Because of that, I highly suggest farming for the emblem set for a character like Ball. Other than just that, I do want to quickly mention the other characters that this set is good for because there are so many that it's really worth farming this for so many different characters. I will go kind of briefly in this section though because I did mention this in my last video, but there are also some new characters that I want to talk about. Characters like Sing Chu, Shang Ling, or Beidou, this set is best installed on. Even some quick swap cryo supports. Characters that, yes, you can run in a freeze comp, and usually you should, right? Like Ayaka in a freeze comp wants a four piece Blizzard Strayer for the crit rate, but if you're just running them in a quick swap like Melt Team or as a support, where you would normally run 2 Noblesse 2 Cryo set is outshined by the 4-piece emblem, which you should run on characters like these. Also for Mona, who I don't have, the emblem set is best in slot when you're trying to spam her burst, and also for a burst support Ember, as I mentioned in my last video. Something else I want to add though is that the 2-piece set can be good on some characters just for energy recharge, as either a placeholder for a better artifact set, or if you just need ER very desperately and have good substats. And so as you can see, the emblem of Severed Fate set is not only only amazing but also a lot better than people give it credit for and while I did cover who it is good on in my previous video I've been getting a lot of questions on whether or not you should farm Emblem of Severed Fate and a lot of people forgetting basically how good this set is even on characters with relatively low energy recharge like a Beto on 135 a lot of people would doubt that it's best in slot on her and would ask me to explain why I believe that so I really wanted to clear this out in a video in case anyone was wondering and again I did my best to talk about new things new subjects around the set that I didn't already cover in my last video talking about Emblem if you have any questions or just feedback be sure to leave it in the comments because i do read most of them i really hope you enjoyed be sure to subscribe if you're new and follow me on twitch if you want to also while i don't normally advertise this feel free to join the discord if you want because it's a very wholesome and active community that helps out basically anyone that needs help so yeah that's about it as always i hope you enjoyed and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace